No. Almost? I said no, Zula. That's the end of it. It is a miracle that you're not laying up in Emmer Hospital or decked out over at the funeral parlor. Look at you. But it was the car's fault. Mama, the car didn't just back out of the driveway and land on top of the college garage all by itself. You had it in the wrong gear. No, I did not. You put it in reverse instead of drive. The police report shows that. You should have let me keep my LaSalle. Your LaSalle was eight years old. I don't care. It never would have behaved this way, and you know it. Mama, cars don't behave. They are behaved upon. And the fact is, you all by yourself demolished that packer. Well, think what you want. I know the truth. Well, the truth is, you shouldn't be allowed to drive a car anymore. No. Mama, we're just going to have to hire somebody to drive you. No, we are not. This is my business. Your insurance policy is written, so they're going to have to give you a brand new car. Oh, not another packet, I hope. Lord Almighty, don't you hear what I'm saying? Quit talking subject to your mother. <laughs> Mama, you're 72 years old. You just cost the insurance company $2,700. You're a terrible risk. Nobody is going to issue you a policy after this. You're just saying that to be hateful. Okay. Yes, I am. I'm making it all up. You know, every insurance company in America is lined up out there in the driveway, waving the fountain pens and falling all over themselves to get you to sign off. Everybody wants Daisy Worthen. Well, the only woman in the history of driving to demolish a three-week-old packer, a two-car garage, and a freestanding tool shed in one fell swoop. <laughs> Sometimes, Louis. Even if you could get another policy, it wouldn't be safe. I'd worry about you all the time. Look at how many of your friends have men to drive on this. Miss Ida Jacobs, Miss Ethel Hess, Aunt Nomi. Well, they are all rich. Daddy left you plenty enough of this. I'll do the interviewing at the plant. Oscar, the great elevator, knows every colored man in Atlanta we're talking about. I'm sure in two weeks' time we can find somebody perfect to see. No! You won't have to do anything, Mama. I told you, I'll do all the interviewing, all the reference checking. No! Everything. Now stop that in your mouth. I am 72 years old, as you so gallantly reminded me, and I am a widow. But unless they rewrote the Constitution and didn't tell me, I still have rights. And one of those rights is to invite who I want, and not who you want, into my house. Oh, you do accept the fact that this is my house. Well, what I do not want, and what I absolutely will not have, there's some, some sofa sitting in my kitchen, gobbling my food, running up my phone bill. Oh, I hate all that in my house. Well, you've got Idella. But Idella's different. She's been coming to me three times a week since you were in eighth grade, and we know how to stay out of each other's way. Even so, there are nicks and chips in most of my wedding china, and I have seen her throw silver forks in the garbage more than once. Do you think that Idella has a vendetta against your silverware? Stop being sassy. You know what I mean. I was brought up to do for myself. On Forsyth Street, we couldn't afford them, and we did for ourselves. It's still the best way, if you ask me. Them. You sound like Governor Talmadge. Bully! What a thing to say. I am not prejudiced. Aren't you ashamed? I've got to be getting home for rain to be throwing a fit. Oh, y'all must have plans tonight. We're going to the Ainsley's for a dinner party. Oh, well, I see. You see what? The Ainsley's? Well, I'm sure Florine bought another new dress. This is her idea of heaven on earth, isn't it? What? Socializing with Episcopalians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do the mama. I guess we can have that Noni run you anywhere you need to go for the time being. I'll be back. I'll stop by to see you tomorrow evening. But how do you know I'll be here? I am certainly not dependent upon you for company. Fine, I'll call first. But I still intend to interview colored men. No! Mama. I thought the ball is over. Right on in. Yes. Hope, isn't it? 
Uh, yes, uh, Hulk Colburn. Well, have a seat there. I've got to finish proofreading these letters. I don't want Mr. Platt to bust me. Oh, just keep right on with it. I got all the time in the world. I see. How long you been out of work? Uh, since back before last November. It's a long mm -hmm. time. Well, Mr. Worthen, you try being me and looking for work. The hiring young is the hiring color. Ain't not much young, it seems like. Mr. Worthen, uh, y'all people are Jewish, ain't you? Yes, we are. Why do you ask? Well, I'd rather drive for Jews. People talk about they cheap and they stingy, but don't say none of that around me. <laughs> Good to know you feel that way. Well, Tell me, uh, where have you worked before? Yes, that's what I was getting at. Um, one time I was working with this woman over near Little Five Points. What was that woman's name? I forget. Anyway, she was president of the Ladies Auxiliary over yonder to the Ponce de Leon Baptist Church. And it seemed like she always bringing up God and Jesus and doing the others. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I'm not sure, but go on. Well, one day, Mr. President, one day that woman said to me, she said, Hulk, come on back in the back with me. I got something for you. And we go on back yonder. Lord, have mercy. She have all these old shirts and clothes be on the bed. Yellow, you know, and nasty. Like they been stuck off in the shiver road someplace and forgot about it. And she said, ain't they nice? They belong to my daddy before he passed on. And we fixed them to sell them to you for 25 cents a piece. Well, what was her name? That's what I've been thinking. What was that woman's name? Anyway, I was going on to say, any fool could see the whole bunch of them shirts and collars ain't worth a nickel. Now, them's the people calling Jews cheap. <laughs> so I said, yes, well, now, I'll think about it. I'll get me another job as fast as I can. Where was that? Uh, uh, Mr. Harold Stone, Jewish gentleman just like you. A judge. Live over yonder on Long Water Road. I knew Judge Stone. You know me. <laughs> he gave me this jacket when he finished with it, and this necktie, too. You drove for Judge Stone? Well, seven years to the day near about. I still be there if he ain't died. And Miss Stone, she decided to go and move to her people, you know, down in Savannah. And she said, come on down to Savannah with me, Hope. Of course, my wife's dead by then. I said, no, thank you. I didn't want to leave my grandbabies. I don't get along with that Geechee trash down there. Judge Stone was a friend of my father's. You know me. Well, I ought to say you're looking for a driver for your family. What are you doing? Uh, running your children to school and your wife to the beauty parlor and stuff like that? I don't have any children. But That's tell a me. shame. My daughter's the best thing ever happened to me. But you're young yet. I wouldn't worry about it. Well, I won't. Thank you. Did you have a job after Judge Stone? Well, I drove a lift truck for the Avondale Dairy through the whole wall. The one that just was. Oh, what I'm looking for is someone to drive my mother around. Oh, uh, excuse me for asking, but uh, how come she ain't hiring for herself? Well, it's a, a delicate situation. Oh, she been going around Bend a little. Uh, that'll happen when they get on. No, nothing like that. She's all there. <laughs> Too much there is a problem. <laughs> it's not safe for her to drive anymore. She knows it, but she just won't admit it. And I'll be frank with you. I'm a little desperate. <laughs> I know what you mean by that. One time I was out of work, and my wife said to me, she said, oh, hopefully you'll get me another job. I said, what you talking about, woman? And the very next week, I go to work for that woman over near Little Five Points. Cahill, Miss Francis Cahill. And then I go to Judge Stone. And there's the reasons I'm happy to hear you folks as Jews. <laughs> well, Hope, I want you to understand that my mother is a little high strung. She doesn't want anybody driving her. But the fact is, if you'd be working for me, she can say anything she wants, but she can't fire you, you understand? Sure, I do. Don't worry about it. I hold on no matter what way she run me. But I have nothing but a little boy back down there on the farm above Mason. I used to ask some hawks to the ground at killing time. Ain't no hawk get away from me yet. <laughs> How does $20 a week sound? Sound like you've got your mama a chauffeur. Good morning. Oh, right cool in the 
good night, Mom. I wouldn't know. I was asleep. Yes, Mom. What's your plans today? That's my business. Right about that. I don't want to be running out of coffee at Dutch Clinton. We? She said we saw a silver polish, too. Well, thank you. I will go to the Piggly Wiggly on the trolley this afternoon. Now, Miss Daisy, how come you don't let me carry you? No, thank you. Ain't that what Mr. Worthen hired me for? That's his problem. Yes, I'm, uh, I found something to do. Uh, I, I'll tell you a scene. Leave my flower beds alone. Yes, sir. You got a nice little place back down yonder behind the garage. Ain't you nothing but just stepping there. I could put you in some funnel beans and some tomatoes and some, even some Irish potatoes if we get someone to be good at. If I want a vegetable garden, I will plant it for myself. All right, I, I'll start going to set in the kitchen then, like I've been doing all week. Well, don't talk to Adela. She has work to do. No, I'll just set there at five o'clock. Well, that's your affair. Yes. Seems a shame it do. The fine automobile setting out there in the garage. Ain't moving in since Mr. Worthen rode it over here from Mitchell Motor and got the 19 miles on it. Seems like that insurance company gives you a whole new car for nothing. Well, that's your opinion. Yes. And my other opinion is that a fine, rich Jewish lady like you don't belong climbing up the steps of no bus toting no grocery store bags. I, I come along caring for you. I don't need you. I don't want you. And I don't like your saying I'm rich. I won't say it then. Isn't that what you and I were talking about in the kitchen? Oh, I hate this. I hate being discussed behind my back in my own house. Now, I was born on Forsyth Street, and believe you me, I knew the value of a penny. Well, my brother man had brought home a white cat one day, and Papa said we couldn't keep it because we couldn't afford to feed it. My sister saved up money so I could go to school and be a teacher. We didn't have anything. Yes, well, it seems like you're doing all right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I had ridden the trolley with groceries plenty of times. Well, I feel bad taking Mr. Worthen's money for doing nothing. You understand that? How much is he paying you? Well, that's between me and him, Miss Day. <laughs> <laughs> and a thing over seven dollars a week is robbery. Since How is robbery? Since I don't do nothing but stay out in the kitchen all day long. I'll tell you what. While you're on that trolley going to the piggly wiggly, I'll hose down your front steps. All right. All right, I'll hold down your step. All right, the piggly wiggly then hold nowhere else. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Wait a minute, you don't know how to run the hose, my beer. Daisy, a gear shift like a third arm to me. Anyway, this is an automatic. Any fool could run it. <laughs> <laughs> and a fool but me, apparently. You don't need to be so hard on yourself. You can't drive, but you probably do a whole lot of things I can't do. It all worked out. I'm going to market, Adela. I'll work to have <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's fool, Hulk. No. I can see the speedometer as well as you can. I see that. My husband taught me how to run a car. Yes. I remember everything he told me, so don't you think for a second that you can... Wait, you are speeding, I see it. We ain't going but 19 miles an hour. <laughs> well, I like to drive under the speed limit. Speed limit 35, yeah. Well, the, the slower you drive, the more you save on gas. My husband told me that. We barely are moving. <laughs> May as well walk to the Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> Is this your car? No. Do you pay for the gas? No. All right, then. My fine son may think that I'm losing my abilities, but I'm still in control of what goes on in my car. Hey, where are you going? To the grocery store. Well, then why didn't you turn on Harlem Avenue? 
Tiggly Wiggly ain't on Holland Avenue. It's on you. I know where it is. And I want to go the way that I always go on Holland Avenue. That's three blocks out of the way, Miss Go back. Go back this minute. We're in the wrong lane. If you don't go back, I'm going to get out of this car and walk. We're moving. You can't just open the door. Because this is wrong. Where are you taking me? To the store. This is wrong. You have to go back to Holland Avenue. Mm. I have been driving to the Piggly Wiggly since the day they put it up and opened it for business. This isn't the way. Go back. Go back this minute. Yonder the Piggly Wiggly. Get ready to turn now. Yeah. <laughs> Look out! There's a little boy behind that shopping cart. I see that. But we're pulling next to the blue car. We're closer to the door right here. Next to the blue car. I don't park in the sun. It fades the upholstery. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Give me the car keys. Yes. Now you stay right here by the car. Yes. And you don't have to go telling everybody my business. No. Don't forget the Dutch cleanser now. <laughs> Good morning, Mama. What's the matter? Uh, what? 
Ma Mama, you, you're talking so fast. Okay. What? All right. All right. I will stop by on my way to work. I'll be there as soon as I can. <laughs> going on? He's stealing from me. Hope? Are you sure? Well, I don't make empty accusations. I have proof. Well, what proof? This. I caught him red-handed. I found this hidden in the garbage pail under some coffee grounds. You mean he stole a can of salmon? Here it is. Oh, I knew. I knew something was funny. They all take things, you know. So I counted. You counted? The silverware first. <laughs> then the linen dinner napkins. Then I went into the pantry. Now turn on the light. And the first thing that caught my eye was a hole behind the corn beet. I knew right away there were only eight cans of salmon. I had nine, three for a dollar on sale. Very clever, Mama. You made me miss my breakfast to be late for a meeting at the bank for a 33 cent can of salmon. Here, you want 33 cents? Here, here's a dollar. Here, here's ten dollars. Here, buy yourself a whole pantry full of salmon. Oh, the idea of waving money at me like I don't know what. I don't want the money. I want my thing. But it's one can of salmon. It was mine. I bought it. I put it there. And he went into my pantry and took it, and it didn't say a word. Now I leave him plenty of food up of them, and I always tell him exactly what it is. They're like having little children in the house. They see something they want, so they just take it. No manners, not, no conscience. Well, he won't admit this. No, you say. I don't know nothing about that. Well, I don't like this. I don't like living this way. Mama. I have no privacy. Mama, please. Oh, go ahead. Defend him. You always do. All right. All right, I give up. You want to drive yourself again? You just go ahead and make arrangements with the insurance company. You take your blessed trolley, buy yourself a taxi cab. Anything you want. Just leave me out of it. Oh, oh Miss Daisy, I believe you're fixing to clear up. Oh, uh, I didn't know you was here, Mr. Martin. Excuse me. Oh, um, I think we have to have a little talk. Uh, just a minute, let me go put my coat on. Oh, Miss Daisy, yesterday when you was out with your sister, I ate a can of your salmon. I know you said you the leftover pump chops, but they kind of stiff. Here, I just want you another can. I'll go and put it in the pantry for you. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Hulk. Uh, I'll be right with you, Mr. Wright. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I have to get dressed now. I'll do that time. Somebody from the family looking after you. Oh, certainly never have that. Booley will have me in perpetual care before I'm cold. <laughs> oh, go on, Miss Daisy. <laughs> oh, run back to the car and get that pot of hyacinths for me and put it on Leo Bowles' grave. Uh, uh, Miss Rose Bowles' house? That's right. She asked me to bring it out here for her. She's not very good about coming. And I believe today would have been Leo's birthday. Uh oh. 
Where the grave at? Now, that's not exactly, but, well, do you know it's over there on the other side of the weeping chair? Uh, well, you see the headstone, Bower. Uh, yeah. What's the matter? Uh, uh, nothing the matter. Uh, Miss Daisy. Oh, I told you it's over there on the other side of the weeping cherry. Now, Lee says bow on the headstone. What does it look like? What are you talking about? Talking about I can't read. What? Can't read. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Anybody can read. No, no, not me. Well, how come I see you looking at the papers all the time? That's just it. Looking, I kind of dope out what's happening from the picture. Well, you know your letters, don't you? My ABC? Yes, ma'am. Pretty good. I just can't read. Stop saying that. It's making me mad. If you know your letters, you can read. You just don't know you can read. I taught some of the stupidest children God ever put on the face of this earth. <laughs> and they all knew how to read well enough to find a name on a tombstone. Now, the name is Bower. But... Buh, 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 bower. Now, what does that buh letter sound like? Sound like a B. Well, of course. Buh, bower. Buh, bower. Err, 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 bower. Now, that's the last part. What letter sounds like err? Err. Well, so the first letter is a B. And the last letter is an R. B R B R B R B R R B R R B R Well, it even sounds like Bower, doesn't it? Uh, sure do, Miss Daisy. That's it. Well, that's it. Now, go on over there like I told you in the first place and find a headstone that has a B at the beginning and an R at the end, and that'll be Bower. Uh, we ain't gonna worry about what comes in the middle. Uh, <laughs> not right now. This is enough for you to find it. Go on. Yes. Yeah. And don't come back here telling me you can't do it. You can. Miss Daisy. Oh, what now? I appreciate this, Miss Daisy. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I didn't do anything. Now, would you please hurry up? I'm burning up out here. She's having a fit, and uh, well, the grocery stores are closed today. Do you have a package of coconut in your pantry? Uh, would you mind bringing it when you come? Honey, your Aunt Rose is saying Mama's got the coconut. <laughs> Many thanks, Mama. I'll uh, see you along. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Decorations. Everybody's giving the Georgia Power Company a Merry Christmas. Miss Florine got them all beat with the lights. Makes an ass out of herself every year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she always has to go and put a wreath in every window says God. Mm, mm. And that silly Santa Claus winking on the front door. I bet she got the biggest tree in Atlanta. Why should she get them so large? Absurd. If I had a nose like Florine's, I wouldn't go around saying Merry Christmas to anybody. <laughs> I enjoy Christmas at their house. Well, I don't wonder. You're the only Christian in the place. Who well, suddenly got that new cook? Florine never could keep hell. Oh, of course, it's none of my affair. No. <laughs> but uh, too much running around? The Garden Club this, the Junior League that. As if any one of them would give her the time of day. 
but she'd die before she'd fix a glass of iced tea for the temple sisterhood. You're right, Miss Daisy. <laughs> oh, sure hope she doesn't take it into her head to sing again this year. <laughs> Sounds like she's got a bone stuck in her throat. You have got a mouthful, Miss Daisy. <laughs> Now, you didn't have to come. You know, Booty would have run me out. I know that. Well, then why did you? It's my business. Well, look at that. Miss Florine done put a Rudolph reindeer in the dogwood tree. <laughs> if her grandfather, old man, Friday could see that. <laughs> what is it you say? You know, I bet he would jump up out of his grave and snatch her bald headed. <laughs> oh, snatch her bald head. <laughs> Doesn't laugh. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. This is not a Christmas present. No. You know I don't give Christmas presents. So sure do. I just happened to run across this this morning. Now open it up. Anybody ever give me a book? Hand writing copy book grade five. I always taught out of these. I saved a few. Yes. Now, it's faded, but it works. Now, if you practice, you can write nicely. Yes. But you have to practice. Yes. I taught Mayor Hotsfield out of that same book. Thank you, Miss Daisy. It's not a Christmas present. No. Jews have no business giving Christmas presents. <laughs> And you don't have to go yapping about this to Bully and Florine. It's strictly between you and me. Rudolph the Red. Let them see. Mr. Worthington, turn up the hot pot. I hope I don't spit up. <laughs> you would never say all of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him. Time for trade. You know, she's losing equity on this old car. Yeah, I bet both of you are gonna miss this whole thing. Not me. Uh uh. Oh, come on. You're the only one that's driven it all this time. Aren't you gonna be just a little sorry to see it go? Ain't going nowhere. I done bought it. 
You didn't. I already made the deal with Mr. Red Mitchell down at the complex. For how much? That's for him and me to know. <laughs> well, for God's sake, why don't you just buy it right from Mama? You would have saved money. Your mama's in our business enough as it is. I ain't studying about having to make no monthly car payments to us. Just mind the regular way. <laughs> well, it's a good car, all right. Nobody should know that better than you. That's never come off the line. That new car, you know, Miss Daisy don't take to it. I let her ride in this year and every now and again. Well, that's rather nice of you. Well, we're all doing what we can. I don't get none of them ashes on my upholstery. <laughs> Somebody must have taken us all bathing. And I asked Papa 
if I, it was just all right to dip my hand in the water. He laughed at me because it was so timid. Well, then I tasted the salt water on my fingers. Isn't it silly to remember that? <laughs> no, silly, most of what folks remember. Talking about the first time. I'll tell you about the first time I ever leave the state of Georgia. Oh, when was that? About uh, 25 minutes back. <laughs> Go on. That's right, first time. My daughter, you know, she's married to a Pullman photo on the NC in St. Helens. And she's always going off to places like Detroit, New York, St. Louis, talking about snow up around her waist and riding on the subway cars. I said, that's all very nice, Tommy Lee, but I just don't feel the need. So this is Miss Daisy. I got to tell you, Alabama ain't looking like much so far. Well, it's nice on the other side of Montgomery. You say so. Pass me up one of them peaches, please, ma'am. Oh, my God. What happened? That sign said Phoenix City, seven miles. We're not supposed to go to Phoenix City. We are going the wrong way. Oh, my God. Maybe you didn't read it wrong. I did not. Stop the car. Stop the car. Here, you took the wrong turn to Opelika. Oh, you took it with me. <laughs> and you didn't want to read for that. <laughs> Well, I was getting the lunch. Now go on back. Oh, my God. It ain't been more than 30 minutes since we made that turn. I'm such a fool. I never and should have come in the car with just you. Why, Bully made me. I, I should have come on the train. I'd have been safe there. I just should have come on the train. Yes, ma'am, you should have. <laughs> <laughs> always fix his crab. They go to so much trouble. Oh, it's all ruined by now, Lord. We got to pull over, Miss Daisy. Something wrong with the car? No. I got uh, to be excused. What? I got to make water. Oh, well, you should have thought about that back at the Standard Oil Station. Car folks can't use the toilet that no Standard Oil, you know that. Well, we don't have time to stop. We're almost in Mobile. You can wait. Yes. <laughs> no. I told you to wait. Yes, ma'am, I hear you. How do you think I feel having to ask you when can I make my water like some damn dog? Well, I hope I best say. I ain't no dog and I ain't no child. And I ain't just the back of the neck you look at when you're going wherever he wants to go. I'm a man nearly 72 years old. I know when my bladder's full. I'm <laughs> getting out of this here car. I'm going on down yonder like I gotta do. And this time, I'm taking the car keys. And that's the end of it. Hulk! <laughs> Hulk! Salary? What you think I am? 
I ain't stepping out ready for no trash or something like that. Yeah, but she got you to thinking, didn't she? You might just say that. <laughs> Name your salary. That's what she said. <laughs> How about $65 a week, sir? Sounds pretty good. <laughs> 75 sounds better. <laughs> oh, it does. Beginning this week. That's very nice of you, Mr. Burke, and I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Burke, you ever have folks fighting over you? No. I've got to tell you, the Almighty good. <laughs>
Well, what is it? You were gone so long. Couldn't help it, though. Big mess up yonder. Well, what's the matter? You might as well not go to the temple at all now. You can't go to the temple today, Miss Davis. Oh, why not? Now, what in the world is the matter with you? Somebody done bombed the temple. What? Bombed the temple? Yeah. That's why we stuck here so long. Why, well, I don't believe it. That's what that policeman up yonder tell me. He said it happened about half an hour ago. No. Oh, God. Well, was anybody there? What, were people hurt? Insane. Well, who would do this? You know as good as me, it's always the same one. Well, it was a mistake. I'm sure they meant to bomb one of the conservative synagogues or the orthodox one. <laughs> the temple is reform. Everybody knows that. Somebody didn't bomb that temple, Miss Davis. I just can't believe it. Well, why would that police make up a lie about a thing like that? Well. One day, uh, you go, you know, makes me think about it. One day, back down below above the farm, above Macon, my friend Pona, I was about 10, 11 years old. My friend Pona, his dad is hanging from a tree. And just the day before, he was laughing and pitching horseshoes with us, talking about how Polar and me are going to have strong, good right arms. Then he's hanging up yonder, hands tied behind his back, flies all over him. I seen him with my own eyes. I froze up right where I was standing. Oh. You go on and cry. Am I crying? No. The idea! Why did you tell me that? I don't know. It messed up your to seem to put me in mind of it. It's ridiculous. The temple has nothing to do with that. So you say. We don't even know what happened. How do you know that policeman's telling the truth? Well, why would that policeman go and make up a lie about a thing like that? Well, you never did anything right anyway. Somebody done bombed that place, Miss Daisy, and you know it too. Go on, just go on now. Well, I don't want to hear any more about it. Well, I'll see if I can get us out of here. Get you home. You'll feel better at home. I don't feel bad. Well, you're the boss. Stop talking to me. <laughs> chosen man of the year by the Atlanta Business Council, an honor which I have seen bestowed on some mighty fine fellows, and one which I certainly never expected to come to me. I fear the loss up here and the uh, gain down here have given me an air of confidence that I don't possess. <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you this. I wish my father, my grandfather, could be here to see this. Seventy-two years ago, they opened a little hole-in-the-wall shop down on Whitehall Street with one print and press. They managed to grow with Atlanta. And to this day, the Worthen Company believes that we want what Atlanta wants. This award proves we must be right. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. If the jackets whoop up on the dogs up in Athens Saturday afternoon, I'll be a completely happy man. <laughs> Oh, you always recognize my voice. What a shame a wonderful girl like you never married. Uh, Miss McClatch, is my son in? Oh, no, don't call him out of a sailor's meeting. Just give him a message for me. Tell him that I bought the tickets to the UJA banquet. 
It's UJA Banquet on a Martin Luther King on the 17th. Well, you are a sweet thing to say so. And don't worry. My cousin Timmy in Chattanooga married for the first time at 57. <laughs> somebody near the 90. Well, you look fine. Now, it's my ageless appeal. Miss McClatch, you gave me your message. Now, Florine's invited, too. Well, thank you very much. Well, but I guess hope should drive us. There'll be a crowd. Mama, I, I think we need to talk about this. Talk about what? Well, the feasibility of this. That's fine. You drive. I was just trying to be helpful. You know, I believe Martin Luther King's done some mighty fine things. Really? If you don't want to go to this dinner, why don't you just come right out and say something? I do want to go. You know how I feel about him. Of course, but Florine... Florine has nothing to do with it. I still have to conduct business in this town. I see. The Worthing Company will go out of business if you don't, if you attend the King dinner? Not exactly. But some of the men I do business with wouldn't like it very much. Well, they wouldn't come right out and say it. They just snicker, call me Martin Luther Worthen behind my back, something like that. And I'd start to notice that my, my banking wasn't being handled by the top dogs. Maybe I'd miss out on a few special favors, a few tips. Now, I wouldn't hear about certain lunch meetings over at the Commerce Club. You know, little things you, you can't quite put your finger on. Jack Raphael over at Ideal Press, well, he's a New York Jew instead of a Georgia Jew. And as long as you've got to deal with Jews, everybody knows the really smart ones come from New York, don't they? So some of the boys might start passing work to Jack instead of old Martin Luther Worthy. I, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't happen, but, but that's the way it works. And if we don't use those seats, somebody else will, and the good Dr. King will never know the difference. If we don't use those seats, I, I'm not supposed to go either. Well, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Well, thanks for your permission. Can I ask you a question? When did you get so all fired up about Martin Luther King? Time was, I would have heard a different story. Well, fully, I have never been prejudiced, and you know it. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you ask Hope to go to the dinner with you? Hope? <coughs> oh, don't be ridiculous. He wouldn't go. Well, just ask him and see. Don't know why you're still driving. You can't see. Yes, ma'am, I can see. You didn't see that mailbox. <laughs> How do you know what I don't see? It nearly poked through my window. <laughs> the car's all scratched up. Ain't no such a thing. How would you know? You can't see. Shading too. Brand new car. You have had this car two years come March. Oh, you forgot to turn. 
Ain't this dinner at the Biltmo? Well, you know it is. Biltmo straight this way. You know so much. Yes, ma'am, my dear. And I've lived in Atlanta all my life. You ain't driven a car now in the 20 some years. Booley said the silliest thing the other day. Is that right? He's too old to be so foolish. Yeah. What did he say? Oh, he was talking about Martin Luther King. Oh, of course you know him, don't you? Martin Luther King? No. Why, well, I was sure you did. But you heard him preach. Same as you over the TV. Well, I think he's wonderful. Yes, sir. Well, you know that you could see him in person anytime you want to. All you have to do is go over there to the... the what is it? Ebenezer. The Ebenezer Baptist Church some Sunday, and there he would be. What's you driving at, Miss Daisy? Oh, it's so silly. Booley said that you wanted to go to this dinner with me tonight. Now, did you tell him that? No, ma'am. Well, I didn't think so. What'd be the point? You can hear him any time, whenever you want. You want the front door or the side door to the built mall? No, I think the side. Isn't it wonderful the way things are changing? What do you think I am, Miss Davis? What do you mean? You think I'm just somebody sitting up here don't know nothing about nothing? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. The invitation to this here dinner come in the mail a month ago. If you wanted me to go with you, how come you wait till we in the car on the way to ask me? What? All I said was that Booby said you wanted to go. Mm hmm Well, you know you're welcome to come, mm -hmm. Hope. Oh, my stars. Well, aren't you the great big baby? Never mind baby. Next time you ask me someplace, you ask me regularly. Well, you don't have to make such a fuss about it. Well, that's the end of it. Let's drop it. Honestly. <laughs> Things change, but they ain't change all that much. I'll help you to the door. Thank you, Hook. I can help myself. Ain't nothing 
awful stuff in the way you carry it. I'm so sorry. Get all that phone. I can't find the papers and the children all waiting. No, you ain't. You ain't no teacher no more. You don't know. And what's the difference? You think you they know what's the matter with you? Uh, your mind took a turn this morning, that's all. You know, come on. Just, just go on you, now. You stop right there. Can you just let yourself No, I can't. I can't. You're a lucky old woman, you know that. No, no. It's all a mess now. You're rich. And I can't do anything about you, you, it. You're good for your years. You, and you got people that care what happened to you. I'm being in trouble. Oh, Lord, I don't want to be trouble to anybody. You, you want something to cry about? I'll take you out to that state home, let you see if it's laying out there in the hall. Oh, my God. I bet none of them take it on the way you're doing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. All those poor <coughs> children in my class. You keep this up. I promise you, Mr. Wilson's going to call the doctor on you. And just as sure as you fall, that doctor's going to have you in the insane asylum before you know what hit you. Is that the way you want it to be? Oh. Yeah. Do you still have that Oldsmobile? You mean from when I, I first come here? Oh, go on, Miss Davis. I've been, been in the junkyard 15 years or more. I, I'm driving your next to last car now. 63 Cadillac, one and finest one. You ought not to be driving anything the way you see. How do you know the way I see, unless you're looking out of my eyes? Hope. Yes, ma'am. You are my best friend. Oh, God. Oh, no, really, you are. You are. <laughs>
Happy Thanksgiving, Mama. Well, look who I brought. No, Miss Daisy. You're keeping yourself busy. Oh, well, she sure is. And she goes to jewelry making class. How many times a week, Mama? Well, she makes all kinds of things, pins and bracelets. She's a regular Tiffany's. Ain't that something? You know, Hoke, I, I thought about you the other morning out on the expressway. I saw an Avondale milk truck. You know me. Big monster of a thing. Must have had 16 wheels. I, I wondered how you'd like driving that thing around. Hope came to see me, not you. <laughs> this one of those good days. Maureen says to tell you Happy Thanksgiving, Mama. She's down in Washington, you know. Well, you remember, Mama, she's a Republican National Committee member now. Good God. <laughs> Mary. Well, what is it, Mama? Go charm the nurses. <laughs> well, I suppose she wants you all to herself. Your doodle mama. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. 